this one I did. Oh, Earl Davis, Max Pro Channel. Um, I want this to be about, you know, um, a base that I've been messing around with for quite a while, a brand I've been messing around for quite a while. And um, what can I say? I, I've done a, a few videos praising uh, the SX bases, right, and how um, practical they are. I've done uh, a few videos, uh, probably the most on the um, Ibanez GSR 200 series of bases that are great beginners bases and yet pros can play them alike. It sounds They sound very good. And um, I'm sure I've done uh, a few videos on these bases, but I haven't really drove it home how practical and great these are. First of all, I want to shout out to uh, my man uh, Thunder Thumbs at Third and the Third Productions, his name Bertram Herbert. What's up, Bertram? He gave me the idea for this video. Uh, I actually got off on the phone uh, with him maybe uh, a little while ago. And uh, we um, both share in common uh, something that we really like, and that is the love of these particular bases. This is a, get the, get the glare out the way, a Fender Squire base. And I've talked about Squire bases before, as I said. These are you know, great bases at um, very, very inexpensive mid-level prices and um, they seem to always do you good. Now, with the Squires that I have, I have to admit that I've always enhanced them a little bit, you know. I've always put some more hardware on them and I've always uh, put a nice little preamp in them. And this is not to say that uh, I just wanted a little more oomph, okay. This is not to say there's anything wrong with the passive Squire. Uh, in fact, people have wrote and mentioned about that. Why are you always putting preamps in these bases? Well, uh, they sound hell of a. Uh, these bases. have such a crisp sound when enhanced by preamplification. Onboard preamplification that you put in the base by a preamp, uh, either at a store or online put it in there and I'm almost going to guarantee you a, a very, very good sound. But you know, pre pre preamps usually sound very good in uh, Fender bases anyway. And it doesn't matter that this is, a, you know, the sort of lower level Fender bases. This comes off sounding great. Um, <clears throat> these bases have always been praised for, you know, being an inexpensive bass that you could, you know, grab and go bass that you can take and, you know, fiddle on a little bit and come out with a great bass. Especially for the funky playing uh, or riffing. I'm just, uh, you know, I mean, beautiful tone, beautiful crisp sound. Um, whether it's uh, bright and funky as it is now or, you know, uh, all bass, I'm just uh, really. for Motown bass, rock and roll bass, you know, just really nice. It's really nice. I mean, I can't uh, praise these bases enough. Um, I give these bases as high as Mark as I give the Ibanez bases. I mean, when Fender came out with this, uh, mid-level line of basses, they really blow, broke the mold as far as the, the jazz style and the uh, uh, P-Bass style. I mean, if you really want to get into a nice beginner's Fender bass, you can't go wrong with the Squire. Um, this particular Squire, uh, I happened to get on sale. I couldn't resist it. I've had Squires before, as I said. Um, for 200 bucks, this usually goes for 300 and some change. And it was really nice when I picked it up, plugged it in, and, you know, fired it up, and it sounded great. Now, 
I did not, repeat, did not put a preamp in them. Um, obviously, the last owner put a preamp in here. And what, so, you know, that's the reason why it sounded so great when I uh, played it. Uh, I cut, you know, went inside this base to see what they had done to it. And these, whoever had it before, had put uh, an Aguilar OB3 preamp in here. Very nice. Uh, uh, I think they're going for something like 175, 180, 189. That preamp. And uh, somebody put it in there, and man, it sounds great. Ooh. Real nice, um, very very lightweight. I mean, you got. I mean, I think this is barely nine pounds, maybe eight and a half. Um, four string. Um, uh, I'll probably uh, put a uh, X tuner on it, an extender, a hip shot extender, and give it a little more room as far as the base. But um, aside from that, you know, I, I loved it at four. It's a great four string. I'm gonna keep it four. Just a nice bass, man. As you can see, the electronics are different now. They usually come with, you know, uh, three knobs, but it's four. Putting that uh, preamp is definitely in there. And it's also, you know, usually you have the uh, out, you know, input jack right here with this fourth um, knob is. It's been changed out and a football. Input has been put down there. And as you can see, added and making this a, a very very fine active bass. Now one thing about this bass is uh, when uh, Fender put these out uh, a few years ago uh, they did make the pickups and they had the pickup standard in here these are Duncan designed pickups by Seymour Duncan I guess they had a tr contract with uh, uh, Fender and uh, the Squire basses all had these Duncan pickups in them. Now around 2012 uh, uh, I guess the association with, with them and uh, uh, Seymour Duncan ended, and Fender went back to putting their own design pickups in there. Uh, I've said this on a uh, other video. I was a little concerned. I actually called Fender and asked them about that, and they true enough they had uh, sent, you know ended their association with uh, Seymour Duncan and started putting their pickups in them, and they sweared by their the pickups are just as good uh, and or better. So I haven't ran into, I mean, run into them, but I haven't really dealt with a bass, a Squire bass that had the new pickups on, in on them and then put a preamp in them. I haven't done that yet. I mean, it may, it may sound a hell of a, I don't know. Uh, but I'll have to do that. But for right now, this is nice. Nice sunburst, you know, three-tone sunburst uh, finish. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, I will do anything else with this other than I might change the bridge uh, to a badass. I love badass bridges. And uh, I don't know, I might change the pick guard, but that's about it. Other than that, man, this bass is staying where it is. It sounds great, and uh, yeah, man, uh, I can't say enough about uh, what Squire has done. Uh, there are a few Squires that uh, I don't know, I want to really get my hands on. Um, there's a, a the original um, Squire Precision bass, uh, called the 70's Precision bass, uh, four string that um, had a maple neck and uh, black black block inlays like this and the trim. I'd love to get a hold of one of those, haven't been able to have the opportunity to play one of those. Uh, there's also uh, a signature uh, Squire bass that's been out for a little while. Uh, I don't know if they're still making them, but uh, it's called the Chris Aiken Squire bass, and it only has one knob here. Squire bass with uh, those white, those beautiful. I love those things. Those beautiful uh, uh, white crystal black inlays and, and white trim. And uh, I've heard a few uh, basses here on YouTube play them. Uh, good uh, YouTube friend of mine, uh, Constantine uh, Islamal, has this bass. He plays. Uh, and it sounds great coming out of his hands, uh, I'm sure. Uh, his hands enhance the bass as well. 
But uh, it sounds good already. I was wondering if uh, I should, you know, mess with that. Maybe put, put a preamp in that. And I, love, I love preamps. I mean, I know some of you guys have been getting on me. Don't you like the natural sound of a bass? Yes, I do. But also a little, like a little help. Okay, I can't help it. I, I love that crisp sound. Uh, that's uh, over the top uh, overhead sound that gives. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to uh, uh, do this video about praising the Squire Vintage Modified Basses. Uh, there are also the Squire Affinities that are very nice, lower priced, and um, the Squire Classics that are a little higher. But uh, yeah, Squire, 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 I love them. I love them. Okay, now you're probably going to ask, some of you going to probably ask, what do you like about better than Ibanez? I can't say I like them more, but uh, they're just, they're, they're, they're about on the same level, you know. Yeah, you, depends, depends on the base. But uh, if I got a top two, that's it. Ibanez and Squire, Finch Squire. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> shout out to uh, my boy Bertram Herbert and his wife, um, uh, alias uh, Thunder Thumbs from Thunder Thumbs Productions. Uh, also, Constantine Islamow. I mentioned your name because uh, you're playing a bass that I want to get a hold of. And uh, yeah, that's it from the Max Proud channel. Thank you very much, Squires. If uh, you have uh, any comments you want to make about the Squire Basin, how do you feel about them? I, I usually don't get negative comments about uh, the Squires, especially the vintage modifiers. I, I usually just do not get it. Cause they're, they're fine bases that uh, uh, beginners, intermediates, and um, you know professionals can play alike. Great bases. Yes, I said it. Okay, this is Earl on the Max Proud channel. That's my latest video. Um, I got to do some things uh, with work and some other things. So it'll, it might, you know, don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. It might be a while if I get my next video up, but uh, you never know. I've said that before, and then boom, something happens. So uh, I'm getting back to you. Until next base, people. This is Earl on the Max Proud channel. Thank you for supporting my channel. Sincerely, Happy New Year.